the Lincoln County Commission on July the 7th, 2011 at 6 p.m. is now called to order. Members present, Donald C. Whitten, Clerk, Charles McCann, President, Charles Vance, Commissioner, Thomas Ramey, Jr., Commissioner. First thing on the agenda, I need a motion to approve the minutes of the regular session of the Lincoln County Commission meeting that was held on June the 16th, 2011 at 10 a.m. So moved. I'll second. Motion second. That'll be an all yes vote. Motion carries. Next thing on the agenda, we have Andy Racer with the Lincoln County Youth Football League. Welcome, Andy. Thank you. Bear with me just a second. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite the public speaker that Justin Blankenship is, so just bear with me. Uh, we'll tell you later. You may do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Uh, First of all, I want to thank you all for what you did for us last year, the donation that you gave us. Uh, without that, uh, we, couldn't have, we couldn't have made it. And I want to present you with a, uh, a picture that we had made of all, the, of all the participants and everything, the girls, boys, and all that stuff that uh, has everybody. Appreciate it. And uh, I brought all the, uh, some of the equipment that we purchased. I have our financial statement from last year uh, with me that uh, that you can all look at. The financial statement with the letter, if I could adjust them. That's like uh, our our main goal was to be 100% debt free at the end of this year, last year, and we were. It shows all everything that we spent on the boys. And the girls, uh, the main goal was to uh, uh, buy some new equipment. We had uh, bought the uh, new helmets from Rydell that were their 31% concussion reduction over a traditional helmet. I brought that this with me. We brought 30, bought 30 of these, and uh, some new shoulder pads and everything for them. The stuff that we had were uh, in pretty bad shape. Last year we were committed to. Uh, Fitting the boys this year, uh, we're going to do the girls. We were able to, uh, we had finished the year with $4,500 in the bank account, and uh, we've already bought 20 new. We've had quite a, a few girls come out. We've had to cut the majorettes off. We've got so many, and it, it takes six weeks to get their uniforms in. And uh, we've already bought 20 new ones at a call of over $2,000 new uniforms, and now the cheerleaders. We have to buy some new uniforms for them, and it takes six weeks for those to come in. So we have to order them. Uh, well, they were ordered last week, most of them. And uh, I think the letter they requested uh, any any help that we can have. We really appreciate it. Uh, you kind of get in a bind right off the season until you start your first games at home, and then you can start getting some extra money in hand. But uh, that's about all the business I have. Well, and you know, uh, I just think it's just great that we got young dad, young mom stepping up and, and doing things for their kids. I mean, kids can't yeah. do things without adults right. providing the opportunity and giving them some leadership and giving them opportunity to you know, proper supervision to right. do things. And uh, in Lincoln County is all I can speak for, but I just think that. We have a, a, regardless of what district, what school you go to, you find a super bunch of people uh, wanting to help their kids, you know, particularly in the, in the sports area, of, of whether it be, you know, soccer or whatever it may be. But uh, we have, uh, as a commission, have just, uh, I guess, I consider fortunate 
that we have had the opportunity to have some funds to help assist in these things. It's, in the past, uh, commissions haven't had that uh, as well as it's been with, since we started getting some coal severance money and those things. It's made a difference, and, uh, and so we have, uh, as we develop our goals for year to year, uh, we always put public water number one, but throughout the goals, you, you'll see things that we believe as a commission we should do, and that's helping our youth, whether it be through 4-H or whether it be through forensics or whatever it may be to help kids do things, uh, we just need to get involved. And everybody that's been on this commission in the past and the present, they seem to believe that you know, it's got to do that. Right. For you guys, I know it's, uh, uh, once you finish your job of a day, whatever that may be, you still got to you know, grab a bite and let's go to the field or yeah. whatever it is. So it just, uh, but you don't get to the top unless you do that. And, right. Uh, we've just been, uh, I think, been fortunate to uh, see people step up, and uh, we had last year had you guys doing the, the, the big deal there, trying to reorganize and get the teams set up, and I think that's great. And we had uh, the, the little league group to actually develop them a field over there, and, uh, and just good to see those things happen. It to is. me, it, it speaks is. well for the people. The county. Yeah. We had several donations last year. We had cleat drives because you have a lot of kids that. They came to play. And I don't want anybody not to play because they can't afford it. That's why we we wanted to get all the uniforms. They were all purchased by us, and then they turn them in at the end of the year. That's and uh, we had a cleat drive, and uh, CNO Motors donated two hundred dollars and thirty pair of cleats, brand new cleats. And uh, we had those. And uh, Heiner's Bakery, they helped out. They came, brought all hot dogs and buns and everything to have, uh, so we could buy cleats and stuff for everybody. It's good. It doesn't go without headaches. Right. I agree. <laughs> you know, one of the things that you look at with our kids is we need them more physically active. Right. And the more things we can offer them to get more kids involved, the better off this whole county is going to be and the kids growing up here. And uh, as Charles said, there, there's nobody knows how much is involved as you guys do. And, and, and we really appreciate the things that you do for these kids and, and offer these kids opportunities they wouldn't have otherwise. I enjoy it. We, uh, Justin and Jason Tolley and myself do all three, but we, football is the only one that we actually run. And it's kind of nice. So the other two seasons, you can just, just coach. <laughs> but uh, that's all I have. I thank well, you all. Will, Without you, that we, we wouldn't have had anything. From, I mean, that's, that's the truth. Well, it, it, we, we were convinced that the change was needed, and, and of course, you know, you have to have confidence in the people who putting the program on and uh, we felt like it, you guys would do the right thing with your kids and the money, so. Uh, yeah, we, uh, I spoke with Justin last night and there's approximately 100 kids this year, just right now, we're still a month from the season start, uh, that have already signed up and shown interest and, and all that. We've got the girls, which it had to be early for them because it takes so long for those uniforms. But uh, there's a lot of people showing interest. We're having a lot of new kids come in, and it's uh, it's pretty exciting. I mean, there's there's several kids coming into the system this year. Okay. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's great that you guys are doing that. We do have on the agenda on page three, with, under new business, to uh, approve a donation uh, for the football of two thousand dollars. So we'll we'll do that when the Item on the okay. Business. You want me to? Just, well, just leave it there, and then we'll find an appropriate place to. Okay. Put the Thank you. We appreciate it. I keep everybody happy. <laughs> <laughs> Next thing on the agenda is Jerry commands. Welcome, Jerry. Um, Jerry, uh, you may have uh, read in the papers, TV, and whatever. Uh, he's. Uh, one of our teachers that excels, and uh, we've got several of those, but uh, Jerry teaches, uh, uh, I guess I call it auto mechanics. I don't know what all uh, the proper name is, but uh, he's done a good job since he uh, started in the old building and in the new high school. He just keeps moving and doing things just so much better. Uh, I stop in there occasionally. Uh, 
uh, to get work done or stop there and talk about uh, going to a fishing trip or something or other, but I do have the opportunity to talk with Gary and and, uh, and he has um, been one of those people that if you're around him very long, you'll find that he's dedicated to his job and to kids. And uh, I think it's important that, again, that uh, our commission here uh, you know, just take a moment to recognize Jerry and the students who have uh, competed uh, at the state level and won and, and competed at the national level and made a good showing. They, uh, didn't win. We would certainly like to have seen them bring home the, uh, the real thing, but um, I think it, uh, we're just fortunate to have Jerry and, and uh, we will honor him here tonight and the students and the people who are here to represent the students. <coughs> Is there anything that you want to say or anything that uh, any of the students want to say? Please I can give them a little bit of background on what we've done. Um, I've been teaching on a motor program for 14 years over and I'm, I eat, sleep, and drink this stuff. My kids know it. I really enjoy it. Um, you know, I've never had a dull moment teaching these kids. But this year was one of them special years. Yes, we've won some championships in the past, but this right here is uh, put on by Ford Motor Company and AAA Travel Service. And uh, it is a competition that we've been doing for 10 years. And uh, it's been out there for 26 years, though. Like I said, I've got into the last 10 years and really seen how, you know, even enhance students to want to think to a higher level, uh, win scholarships, tools, prizes, money, all kinds of stuff. It, it, really, uh, it really turns me on to trying to help them. So every now and then you run into some good students, though, that excel. And, uh, and uh, I have good students every year. But this year is just one of the special years where you have a couple of kids. This right here is a team competition. We competed against 27 schools back in February in a written competition. And the top 10 team written goes on to the uh, state hands-on competition. We qualified fifth in a written out of 27 schools. Puts us into the, what we call the finals. And we went into the finals on May 5th up there uh, in Bridgeport. And uh, these two boys, uh, this uh, J.R. Aggins and Christopher Fukori, and I'll get with Chris here in just a minute. But uh, they, uh, they, uh, they really, they, they did well up there. We have it's 10 2012 Mustangs lined up, brand new cars, and they're all bugged with 10 bugs each, the identical bugs. You got 90 minutes, and they say go. And these two boys tore after it, and we can we finish in one hour, 10 minutes ahead of our nearest competitors. So they really, I mean, they were, they just did, they just, you know. They went at it and they worked as a team. They got it done. And uh, we won the state championship for the first time. I've been second. I've been third. I've been fourth twice. I've been all over this thing. They know when Lincoln County's coming because we always right there. We're competitive every year. But this is that year we finally broke the ice and won first place in state championship. And um, so it was it was a special year. And uh, we got to go to the nationals. And they they pay for everything. This four AAA is awesome competition. They flew us to Detroit. We went to Dearborn, Michigan, and from there, and we stayed at the Five Star Hotel. We got to go to the Four World headquarters right there. To, with the, they have all 50 states there. A field of 50 Ford F-150s there. Even though we didn't do as well as I thought we, you know, as we wanted, obviously, but uh, we, it was my first time there. I learned some things, uh, some tricks and stuff. They, there was a couple of, you know, there was a lot of states that they stumbled up there. So that's why, that's why it is at, at that level. But uh, I learned a lot, and I said at their expenses. But uh, so I'm hoping to come back to the nationals again, and I really, I mean, even though we didn't do as well as we wanted to the nationals, they, them boys, they got so much, so many tools, shirts, hats, jackets. Jr. here has won over sixty-three thousand dollars. Well, Jr. and Chris together, they won over sixty-three thousand dollars in scholarships, and we're going to put it to use. That's the good thing. Uh, Jr. If you will stand up here for me. <laughs> This is Jr. Uh, we call him Jr. It's uh, Joseph uh, Gary Agnes. Uh Not only did Jr. compete in the Ford AAA, he also uh, competed in Skills USA, which I want to thank the County Commission for helping us out with that trip. Also, that was we took uh, 13 kids to competition, but when we get one in the in the field of automotive, Jr. won second place. He competed in 30 schools at one time, 
He took second. He won $6,000 for his college. He's going to University of Northwestern, Ohio. And he won $6,000 on that day for, the, for there, as well as other scholarships. And then when we went to the Ford AAA, he, when him and Chris won first, uh, he won another $10,000. So he got $16,000. Now, Chrissy, <laughs> I, Chrissy can stand up here with us. The good thing about uh, some of these kids' hearts is the reason Chris can't be with us, he's in the military right now. And uh, he's serving his country. So mom's here on his behalf. And uh, again, it's special that, uh, you know, Chris is not, he was a junior at that. Usually juniors don't get to this level. But as a junior, he went and, uh, you know, MJ or the team won first place. So he's got all that scholarship money. He gets to come back to me again this year and we have a chance to go to Nam State again. So uh, that's a really special. But Chris is in Oklahoma right now where it's a hundred and some degrees every day, running four miles, five miles at a time, but he's serving his country well. Chris is his mom and I want her here to help uh, you know receive the uh, uh, the county commission uh, had his something for us here. But I want to give you a little bit of background about these kids and they worked hard. It ain't me. I mean it was them and that car and that vehicle or whatever it was. You know, I, yeah, I trained them all year long, but it was up to them. And then two worked together and uh, put together a good thing. So with that, with all that background, I want to give you an idea. You know, we just don't down there fixing cars every day. We're taking to another level, and uh, it shows sometimes. Yep. Anything you want to say? <laughs> Chris would have loved to be here today. He was a little upset because he couldn't. But like I said, he's working hard every day. He's doing good. He says to tell JR, hey. <laughs> And Jerry, thanks a lot of Jerry. He's learned a lot from Jerry. He's been um, not only a teacher, but a mentor. He's real close with Jerry. Um, they experienced, these three experienced something together, you know, that they'll never forget. It was something great. It was not only for them, but for Lincoln County, for our high school. I went to the competition when they won first in state, and, you know, they represented our school and our county with, um, you know, with pride. And these boys really, really stood out. They done a great job, and we were all very, very proud of them, and proud of Jerry. So, why don't we always keep your back? I'll read one of them. They're all basically the same. It says, Joseph J.R. Atkins, the Lincoln County Commission hereby recognizes the momentous achievements of the Lincoln County High School Automotive Technology Program in winning the 2011 Ford AAA Student Auto Skills Competition on May the 5th, 2011. The Commission congratulates you on your success and thank you for bringing honor and pride to your school, your community, and your county. And certainly your family too, right? <laughs> this is for Chris. And one for Jerry also. We wanna thank we wanna thank you guys for doing that. It's really special. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Keep up the good work. <laughs> this ain't gonna be our last one. <laughs> I heard you say you had a junior, so you I hear you. So we're expecting the more. Okay. Three, two, one. And one more. It's too short. Three, two, one. Thanks. Good job. Thanks again. Spend that money. <laughs> You're welcome to stay for the meeting. Uh, anytime you get want to move on, just feel free to go. You're welcome to stay. There is one thing I wanted to say. You know, after having served on the Board of Education prior to being on the commission, and I know uh, both of these guys served on the board or in a superintendent capacity, when you're in the position of being able to listen to teachers 
come in and talk about what they do. You can hear in their voice if it's a job or if it's a passion. And with Jerry, it's obvious it's a passion. It's not just a job. And I think that if we had more teachers like Jerry, and I know we do have a lot of teachers like you, but if everyone took it as serious as you do, not only to go to work and do the job to show that our kids are the best kids in the state, but if you also helped, if the other teachers did what you did to show that these kids can compete at any level. And I believe this year, Lincoln County High School is fairly a new school. However, with what these boys have done, with Jerry's help, the softball team, and so many other great accomplishments this year, that Lincoln County High School is on the map. And Lincoln County, for the first time probably in my life around the state, is being looked at in a positive manner. And for that, I thank each of you for what you did. And uh, look forward to you coming back next year, Jerry, to ask for more money, because I know we're going to be seeing you here because you're going to be successful. <laughs> thank you. Can't argue with success. <laughs> The next thing on the agenda is Ridley Town. Welcome, Rick. They all leave when you go. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that precedes my coming up. <laughs> I think Phil's always talked about. Yes, I have. Okay. Update you on the project, uh, the wastewater project, and also the uh, stuff we're going to Camp Lakeview. Um, we're at the point where we've got 50% of 24 homes are done. I see Clayton's on here. Yes. That's a long way out there. Yeah, sure is. It's the uh, end of dog bone. Um, so it could easily be that by the end of this August we'll be finished with all the work in the space. Um, we're still going to continue doing the water sampling and the effluent sampling, so the project will continue going until next March, but the installation may be done by then. Um, one of the important things that's just happened is that we, you know, we're working on this maintenance committee stuff to have a full-time person hired to do maintenance on the systems we're putting in, and the um, uh, committee went through a bid process, they did some interviews, uh, in the end we only had two bids, we were open for more, but we only had two. And today we met with Lyle Clark, and the, um, who is somebody from the watershed, uh, and somebody from the county, and the committee decided, the bid committee, which is separate from the project itself, it's a separate ent entity, um, they're going to draw up a contract with him. Um, through sort of an evaluation probationary period the first part of November. Um, Lyle does not have lots of experience, and so one of the things the project is going to do is going to bring in some national folks to make sure that he's well trained, that he knows how to troubleshoot these things. So we're hopeful that this is going to work out. And if it does, my thought is that uh, at that point in November where they're satisfied with his work, we go ahead and sign a contract. We take this 2014. And the 2014 date parallels the state's permits for the direct discharge. And so we thought we'd sort of stay on the same track as the permit. So that's going on. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it works. We're in the watershed today, troubleshooting on some systems from the very first phase that we did. We're on phase three now. So a while ago that we're having some trouble with trying to figure out what to do. Uh, I hope by the next meeting I'll have some suggestions for you. Uh, I wanted to think about Lakeview. Uh, we're about ready July 13th. We've done two before that. When we just did at the end of June, we had nine people show up. We're still hoping for a whole lot more. I mean, it's a shame not to have more people out there. Uh, this will be the first time that we've really partnered with Tri-River. They've agreed to run a bus, uh, and I met with Paula, and we're actually going to start down at Ranger and run up that side of the county. Um, people can also take the bus from White's Plaza and meet at save -A -Lot, and then we'll take them down there. So hopefully we'll have some more people. We'll see. Um, Tri-River has committed to doing, trying this twice to see what happens. See what happens with that. Judy and I have been talking about 2012. 
And one of the thoughts was that we might try to make Camp Lakeview one of the summer work sites. Uh, and if we could get that to happen, then I would, I've got to renew my lifeguarding once again. And I would try to get some kids who might qualify for as summer workers to go with me, get them trained as lifeguards, and then part of their time could be spent out there at Camp Lakeview as part of their summer work, actually lifeguarding there. And that might, uh, you know, we might be able to expand it from Wednesdays. I'm not sure. We'll have to see whether, whether it can work or not. But we're trying to make it look, work a little better for. So they basically pick up the kid and the guardian and the rides with them? The guardian could. Um, they wouldn't I'm just thinking about like next year as far as numbers and stuff. If maybe, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we do something like sports participation, physicals up there, and why they come mm -hmm. there, you know, if they want to participate in things later on. Sure. All the media, we can, we can do that. Set something up and I can do it for now. Okay. Yeah. Like that would be great. Because of the sense, because a lot of the kids around that time of the year you need, need to have a lot of and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's just something you might want to think about. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, well, I think the more things we've got going on there to mm -hmm. pull kids up and to pull families up. And this time of the year, up through the time we start school, you know, it's busy. Well, in August, we'll have our uh, second annual kayak races. Um, we're talking about maybe some swimming races up there. And um, Dave Roberts is working on, I don't think we're going to call it a bicycle race. I think we're going to call it a bicycle tour because it sounds a little less scary. You're just a slow peddler, but of doing something that might actually end up at the lake. So. Well, and you know, and something along that line, in order to begin to keep people involved in doing things, if there's something that this commission could do to provide uh, some type of uh, awards or things like that, uh, come to us with a plan, if, you know, once you all get your something together. About help buy trophies, food, or something like that. Great. I'm sure they're going to get tired of peanut butter and probably sandwiches by the end of this summer. Maybe we could be in one of the committees. We could sure. Have we could have the committee meeting. Yeah, three. Yeah, three. Uh, one of you in each different committee. Yeah. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> well, like oh, I was actually a troll motor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Next thing on the agenda is the Hardest Veterans Community Center and the Porco Community Center. Um, Thomas, do you have anything to talk about the Hardest Veterans Community Center? I have something later to mention in my report. Okay. I will say that we have been having some air conditioning problems. We've got that fixed. We've got a summer youth program going on up there now. Um, we're receiving the rent pretty good. And I know that. Um, Sarah said that this last Wednesday was very, very busy at the uh, tax day. Doris, you have anything to talk about on the uh, Yeah. We uh, uh, decided that we are only going to meet once a month, the first Friday of the month from now on. And because of the holiday, our meeting this month will be tomorrow night. Um, there's the minutes from the last meeting. And, uh, um, tomorrow night we're going to have, a, I guess you might call it a re-election of officers since we have uh, Lawrence Woods in there, we're going to reshuffle the responsibilities. And also, um, I think that the last time I was here, Mr. McCain, you asked me about the roof, uh, and uh, it appears that there might be a leak in the hallway. So I will check that out tomorrow. Scott's been gone for a couple of weeks. I think he went to a church camp, and uh, but he's back. He sent me an email, but uh, I will make sure we check that out tomorrow night and see what we can find out about it. But everything seems to be going along pretty good. I think the uh, sign language class, I believe, starts Monday. So I don't know how the nutrition classes went. They've been going on, and I think the last one is this next Wednesday. They're no longer going on. I'm sorry? No, 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 no. For nutrition? Okay. She came two weeks and no one said that. But anyway, the, uh, I like to say that we'll have a meeting tomorrow night and if y'all want to attend, you're more than welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks.
I would just add to that, I do have it in my report, but I did stop there last Friday and someone did tell me, I think it was Lawrence, that they thought that everything was good on earth except there was a possibly a leak issue. So uh, we just need to find out for sure what it is and then we'll have to get the contractor back over there. Okay. Well, we just, at the meeting in the last time, it did. It was just reported that they thought there was a leak yeah. in the hallway, and I don't think Scott's investigating. But like I say, he was he, he was worried, but he was not worried. But he was looking forward to getting away for a few right. weeks. Well, the thing is, we got to make sure that if the leak is on the part, I guess the concern I had, the contractor this really worked right. on the multi-purpose room, right. and something he done may have caused the leak, or it could just be a, yeah. a new issue. So. Well, well, whatever they were working on, they cut something off. Or something, and it did leak in the primary. Now, what happened? Whether you put the other one in, but I, I have stopped checking out and said, but we need it for sure. Yeah. yeah. And the outreach, we really like to thank you for the sign. We got a Friday, and we got a Thank you very much. Good looking sign. Thank you. And next thing on the agenda is new business. I need a motion to approve the bill to submit it for payment. So moved. Motion second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the exoneration orders as submitted by Tracy Dempsey Assessor. So moved. Second. A motion second. Then all yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the appointments done in vacation Lincoln County Commission by Donald C. Whitman Clark. So moved. Second. Motion second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the employment of Cindy Vance as humane officer, litter control officer, process server at a rate of pay of ten dollars per hour. Second. second. Motion second. All oh, yes. Motion carries. Cross donation. We received a letter, and I think it's in your packet there. Uh, Red Cross has done a lot of work here in the county and uh, with flood issues and spent a lot of money, and we really don't have uh, uh, any way of generating money to help Red Cross out. And uh, they asked for $5,000. If we would put in 5000 they would match with 10000 Anyway, they asked for more money than I put down here to give, but uh, uh, I felt like it. Uh, we should do something and something of quality. And, uh, before we did it in memory of uh, Richard Holder, who had done all the uh, so many hours of work to keep Red Cross going in Lincoln County, and so uh, asked his wife Carol or any members of family if they would like to come and and we could make a donation in honor of Richard again. So. At this time, I'd ask for a motion to approve a donation of $2,500 in memory of Richard Indian for the Red Cross. I will move on that motion. I'll second. In motion and second. All yes. And I do have a check here. Almost knew that the commissioners would approve this. Never <laughs> but I felt such a good cause. If, if Carol had come up, I'll give you the check. Motion to approve a donation to the Lincoln County Youth Football League in the amount of $2,000. So, second. Motion second. All yes. Motion carried. The next item is uh, a matter that uh, we had at the last meeting, maybe the last two, uh, and you authorized uh, me to work on that and come up with uh, a, a solution or at least get us started. And what I have here is a motion to uh, to request the commission to employ Joe Vaughn, who has their own private, uh, uh, con I guess, a contracting type service that deals with uh, 
not only local issues here, but state issues on redistricting. And she has uh, given us a uh, request that we consider $3,500 to employ her. And, and I really feel that uh, she's very capable. Uh, what she has suggested, she would uh, certainly meet with me and talk about the issues uh, it's coming up, but she will be at our meeting next week on the 14th is the plan to have her here just to hear the concerns that people may have or we may have. And uh, if we need her at the second <coughs> meeting, uh, I'm sure we can have her there also. And then she will take <coughs> the information that's gathered in the directions of this commission and uh, draw up the uh, guidelines that we're to follow uh, or make sure that we get things mapped out properly and things and uh, uh, she has quite a bit of experience so after talking with her uh, I really uh, as I mentioned last time got the referral from Kanoa County and uh, after uh, getting into it I feel very comfortable uh, having her uh, to work on because she's done so many counties and has the experience uh, along with that she has sent us uh, uh, some information that could uh, help. Maybe it, it shows that it's passed it down. She sort of the county and what she uh, sees now and what the numbers are. So that'll give us something. Uh, I really hadn't been able to. I thought I could find them online, but I hadn't been able to. So I got a hold of her. She said she would send them down, and she did. Uh, you want to copy the printer got a little weak when I was trying to print it out, but uh, basically shows the, uh, uh, the eight tax districts and the six uh, districts that we uh, have with our magisterial. Uh, <coughs> and what she sent me shows all of it, but uh, uh, I just try to focus on Lincoln County. But maybe uh, we can all look at these and uh, as we get together and, and uh, next week uh, at least you have some idea of what the figures are and based on this I think uh, what she's trying to show is the best I could determine I just really got to work on it today a little bit but that you see the population uh, uh, is represented and, and the, by this by the voting precincts the number of registered voters I, I haven't got to the point of <coughs> That's of course the voter thing is a, based on last year, I guess, information. But I'm sure that if we work through this thing, that's going to change. But that's something else we'll be working on as a separate project. But anyway, we do have some information to uh, start working on. And, uh, and again, we will uh, meet just for the public's sake. Uh, any of you and all are certainly welcome to be here. It'll be Thursday the 14th, next Thursday, at 6 o'clock in this room here. And basically just be talking about some of the things we mentioned here and have some handouts and just basically uh, <coughs> receiving input. And we have to put a, <coughs> a plan together and vote on it and adopt it sometime between now and the end of September to be sort of the frame we'll be working in. That's all I have. I take a, entertain a motion to award the contract. So a second. A motion and second. All yes. A motion carries. I need a motion to approve the proposal submitted by T and G parking lot striping and stenciling in the amount of three thousand five hundred fifty dollars for the courthouse parking lot. So moved. Second. A motion and second. All yes. A motion carried. <coughs> Commissioners, we, uh, if you've seen in your pocket here, there's a letter to Steve McComas from Belva Goodman and Mr. Gary Woodall. Um, it's concerning the West Hamlin bus uh, stop, as it was known. They had a restaurant there, and um, evidently there was some complaints <coughs> filed. They've investigated, and she is requesting a formal hearing concerning these um, allegations so I, i've set up a hearing date on august the 4th 2011 at 6 p.m on the notification alleged offense to the west Virginia code 7-3 on the property owned by bella goodman and gary Woodall. 
And can we have our prosecutor here, you think? I'm going to have a motion to second. Second. The motion to second. Mm -hmm. Set the hearing. All, <coughs> All yes. Motion carried. I need a motion to approve a donation in the amount of $1,000 to the Duval Raiders Midget Football League. So moved. We'll say that. Motion second. All yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Need a motion to approve the drawdown request number two in the amount of $1,462.67 for the Lincoln County Crime Watch from the Governor's Community Participation Grant Center and give Charles S. McCain present authorization to sign the stated documents. So, second. Motion and second. All yes. Motion carries. I need a motion to approve the Isle of County travel for Chris Terry and Alan Holder to attend the AFCO International 77th Annual Conference and Expo in Philadelphia, PA. On August the 7th through the 10th, 2011, as requested by Alan Holder, Director of Lincoln 911. So moved. Second. The motion second. All yes. Motion carries. This next one here, um, you won't find these copies in here, but since we're not meeting no more this uh, month, I have a deadline of uh, July the 15th on General County. July 31st on the call, but I need a motion to approve the budget revisions for the carryover funds for the general county to be submitted to the state auditor's office for approval. Of course, that will be up on Mr. McCann. We'll get him to approve it, and you'll give him his author authorization to do this. Second. Motion and second. Be an all yes. Motion carried. And the same thing for I need a budget revision for the carryover funds for the coal severance fund to be submitted to the state auditor's office for approval. So moved. Second. In motion and second. All yes, motion carried. On both of those, uh, we're on solid ground. Good end of the year, quite well. Okay. And we're going to skip the next item. Yes. Um, public comments. Anyone in the audience that's not on the agenda that would like to speak at this time? Yeah. Welcome, Jack. State your name for the record, sir. My name is Jack Riley, Lincoln County Fairs and Festival. Talk about. <laughs> We're asking the county commission uh, for funding for a leech bed at the fairgrounds. We are paying every time we have the tanks pumped out $1,000. And a facility like we have got. It, it's, it's requiring more and more less majority. Can't you get Rick to give you one of these? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Rick, how about a lease bed? Wrong water <laughs> But anyway, uh, we've been working with the health department and that's the number. And uh, they say that we can put it in and it has been approved, but we just need funding. Well, I got the letter and I certainly have been considering that. Uh, I guess. We'll give you a proposal. <laughs> uh, why not? Uh, but it's a sewer line up there. Well, it'd be hard too. Uh, but the health pharmacists will never see a sewer line up there. They probably won't. But anyway, you have a $10,000 partnership grant that one's already got the letter on. And what I'm going to suggest to you is that us uh, use some of that money to help put this in. Well, I called about that. She said we would have to write a letter suggesting the change. I, and I was going. You to, know more about it than I. Well, I, yeah, we can do it. We can get it done. Uh, if, but what I was going to suggest is that we take a couple of pencils. And yes, and we will give you a thousand if the commission is willing to help on it. But then help you get this other converted over. You still have some left, for right. pencils. That kind of thing is more than a thousand dollars. I'm sure, but you've got to start. But, uh, but that's uh, would be my suggestion. But they're talking about putting a pump to where there'll be 600 foot lines where it'll pump individually. In, in other words, it all won't rush into one line, it will go into all six yeah. different intervals. Rick, he can probably tell you all about that. Uh, I doubt it. I give you some things not to do. <laughs> well, <laughs> what I wish you want to make sure you don't create a system. 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 Uh, we have got to go We have got to go to the system. 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 
We are asking for $7,500 to help us with our... I'll entertain a motion to provide $1,000 and to change the um, partnership request to pay for the remainder of the sewage system. And if you need money up front to help put it in, that we might be able to do that. A rational number is waiting an answer. They wanted it for July 4th. That's the folks we can't do it. And then, uh, is there a motion? <coughs> so, I'll second. Motion to second. All yes, motion to So just give the duty to work it out. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Know, if you want some help figuring out a design that might make well, more sense, I'd be glad to pull some folks from working on it together. Rachel and Lumber, the guy with Larry, has already in the health department of our you might check the letter now. Is there anybody else in the audience that's not on the agenda that would like to speak at this time? You want to speak? Okay. <laughs> well basically the only thing else I can have is that the report for us is going good. We've had no complaints, no problems, everything came in just made us today. Now later on, in a couple of weeks, three weeks, we might need another truck, but other than that, <laughs> everything's doing good, and we're getting in all kinds of donations of clothing and stuff like that. And, you know, we just basically we need furniture or something like that, but maybe in, you know, a couple of weeks or so, or a month. I talked to Rose. I so talked to Diana today, she's by the center. She said, tell you that they have lots of furniture. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't tell, Diana didn't tell me that. Well, we have a credit up here. They ever charged us on something, and she wanted up, we wanted a refund check or credit, and I said, no, just keep giving us credit, and we'll be using it here for long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Y'all need a truck, and I said, well, let's hold off for a little while. And she said, so right now, to... really, we have quite a bit of clothing, and we've got to get it out, which is going good. But until we get it out there, we can't handle that truck right now. So that's where I said maybe a month. <laughs> yeah. But we appreciate anything y'all did for us. Thank you very much. Well, you guys appreciate just putting your time in and getting a good service. Today. All of you. More good Lincoln County people. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Okay, Commission Concern. Commissioner Bates? Um, I don't really have anything to report other than uh, I did speak from the governor's office yesterday. They reappointed me to the uh, driver's license advisory board. Um, but Thomas is going to mention here a little bit about the governor's efforts with his uh, trying to figure out how to handle the uh, drug epidemic we have in, in West Virginia, especially in southern West Virginia. So I'll defer up to I don't have a whole lot to report from the last few weeks. I didn't take a week and go on vacation. It's very much appreciated. But on June the 21st, I was a guest speaker for the Summer Youth Workforce, which is the, uh, the young workers we have all across Lincoln County. We have seven, I think, here at the courthouse. We have eight. Eight, we have. And we have uh, them from Allen Creek to Hearts Creek. And they had to, before going out in the workforce, have one week of schooling and training, and they asked if I would come down and be a guest speaker, and I absolutely said yes, I would love to. And uh, during my time with them, I focused in on the importance, as we talked about earlier, of just trying to uplift our youth and focus on what's important, which is helping our young people succeed. And one of the things when I was in college, going through the business courses, that uh, I was taught and it stuck with me was the fact that in life you can either be a leader, a follower, or you need to get out of the way. And I told them that, you know, that's something that stuck with me because, you know, during my travels with work, traveling across the country, I always hear negative stereotypes about West Virginia. So I was always having to defend West Virginia. And then during my travels across the state, I always heard negative things about Lincoln County. 
and then traveling across Lincoln County, I always heard negative things about hearts. So I mean, it's always one way or another. You you have to try to pull yourself up and, and do the best you can to be a leader, and uh, just explain to them that you know, being the uh, first person in my family to be able to have the uh, opportunity to go on to college and be a, be a college graduate, and how they can do that, and ask them how many of their friends from school are probably, this was early in the morning, how many are still at home during the summertime in bed sleeping? And they all raised their hands and I said, you know, you've taken the initiative yourselves to at least be a leader during this summer and you should uh, pat yourselves on the back. On June the 27th, I had a chance to talk to the Secretary of State. Natalie Tennant was returning my phone call. Um, as most of you have probably heard over the last few weeks, We've had some decision makers, which is a, a statewide TV channel on Sundays, focus on Lincoln County, and they focused on purging, and uh, really gave an unfair image of Lincoln County, biased. I mean, biased to the extent that it made me sick to watch it. And so I wanted to call the Secretary of State because I had heard earlier in the week that she was going to be a guest on decision makers and I wanted to make sure that her staff had relayed to her all of the accomplishments that Donald Whitten and his staff have made in regards to the purging process. So when she called me we talked about the progress that had been made, we talked about the, uh, the previous decision maker she called me on the 27th but that prior Sunday was when the decision makers aired and during her interview Ray Carey, who is the commentator, was the pr week prior hard on Lincoln County, hard on the Secretary of State. She stood up to him. She made it clear that, you know, there are laws to follow. There are, in every single county, dead people on the voter rolls, and there's a process you have to go through. And just because there are people on the rolls that might be deceased or possibly live in different counties or different states, that doesn't mean those people vote, and there's been no accusations or proven fact that those people have voted. No dead people have voted in Lincoln County. No people that live out of state have voted. And um, it was a good conversation with her. But while on the phone with her, I pointed out that, you know, one of the things that bothered me more than just hearing about the unfair attacks on Lincoln County and the fact that never once was it mentioned that Donald's office had started a purging process months before this news agency picked up on the story. They didn't mention that. They didn't mention that thousands of people had been purged up to the point these stories were ran. Then they took swipes at Southern West Virginia and talked about how bad Southern West Virginia is. This is a Southern West Virginia issue. It's a Southern West Virginia problem. So I made comments to the Secretary of State that if you look at the numbers out of the state journal that ran prior to these decision maker stories, you'll see that the majority of counties that have purging problems, that have more than 90% of people on the voter rolls, are central and northern counties, not southern counties. And she was sympathetic, she understood, and, uh, and I think that thanks to her leadership, and I know the county clerk has told me this actually this week, thanks to her leadership and, and the assistance that her office has provided, this office in, in our county has made great progress. And I think that our Secretary of State, our county clerk, and the workers in that office deserve an applause from every one of us for the work they've done in improving Lincoln County. And I think that Bray Carey not only owed the Secretary of State's office an apology and the Secretary of State, I think he owes the county clerk, the county clerk staff, and all of Lincoln County and Southern West Virginia an apology. I think he should go to some of the counties in the north, such as Marion County that has 92% registered. I think he should go to Jackson or maybe Hancock County, which is in the Panhandle. That's not a southern county. Hancock County has 95.2% of people registered. And uh, Wetzel County, which is near the Panhandle, 94%. So I think that if you want to give a fair shake to this story, you should tell the truth and you should tell the entire truth. I'll stop there, get off my slip box. That's a pretty good name. Um, I've been working with Jake Hunt from the Region 2 workforce, 
and uh, Region 2 is the group that hires the summer workers, and we needed to bring in some help for the Harks Community Center in terms of keeping the building clean, cutting the grass, and since we had this opportunity with workforce, I've worked out, and with the Commission President's help, the opportunity for two people currently to be at the Harks Community Center, and we are looking at possibly one more to be added there throughout the summer, and after the summer ends, the uh, worker that's over the age of 18 has the opportunity to stay there for the remainder of the year. I met with Channel 13's reporter Gil McClanahan and he wanted me to give an interview about the uh, certified business location and being on the EDA and on the commission I, I accepted and I just talked about the importance of being uh, open to new business, the commitment to helping create new business and and new jobs for our people, and uh, I think that story ran yesterday or day before yesterday. Uh, had a phone conversation with Scott Polly, president of the McCorkle Community Center Board, told me that things are going real well there. He'd like to see more uh, unity within the community, and he's going to work on some things that's going to bring some unification in the McCorkle area. And he's also going to bring before the commission at the next meeting some uh, youth initiatives that he would like for us to consider helping fund. Been in contact with the Southwestern Community Action Council. I was uh, accepted as their newest board member, and I will go to their office next week for orientation. And just wanted to touch on what Commissioner Vance said: the, uh, the hearings that the governor is having across the state in regards to the, the drug problem. I think that uh, it took real leadership on his part to step up and, and to put together a task force to help us help our people because so many of us, and I'm sure everybody in this room knows someone that you would never have expected to have gotten addicted to drugs. And once they get adducted, addicted, especially our young people, they, they don't have the resources or the information to be able to get the help they need to stay clean. And I think if we had some safety nets in place up front so that they don't get into the uh, system in other ways and, and become a statistic with the record, that the state would be a much better place. That's all I have. On this drug court thing, uh, just right before we end the work day today, Jerry Swanson uh, wanted a minute of time to talk about, uh, I guess the drug court concept is moving well, and uh, he basically, it's a four county, uh, Lincoln, Logan, Boone, and Mingo. And, they're going to change the way it's operated, not directly out of uh, Supreme Court, but actually have some, uh, I guess the law says, certain people to be make up a local board and to uh, operate that and make it work and hire a, a director and those kind of things. So it sounds like it, that the uh, momentum is there to do something about all this issue with drugs. It's, every day I get two or three calls from different communities what are we going to do with this, this drug problem, that drug problem? Uh, it's just uh, getting to be a, a dangerous situation. And we've talked about that in the past, about people stealing the copper and all that. But uh, the drug issue is something that we all are going to have to get involved in, I think, in some way, somehow, whatever we can to help people. It's a, it's a serious issue. I'm sure that Dr. Banks is more aware than any of us of the epidemic. It's, just, it's a serious matter, so uh, we're going to have to uh, work together to help solve this problem. It won't solve itself. To the report uh, on June 21, as a uh, board member of the Analyst Authority, I uh, did attend the meeting. Uh, only two of us were there. Uh, we uh, in the process of appointing a new member, but one was in training, and uh, so we end up two of us there. We discussed several items, but uh, no votes were taken. We decided to meet later, and and, and we did meet uh, later in the week. And I'll get into that. June 28th, uh, attended the Farmland Protection Board. Uh, I am the county's representative. I asked at the la at the meeting the other day. Uh, it, it does require a county commission to be there, and uh, I've been on it for almost four years now. And I asked the question: Does it have to be a, a, a county commission president, or can't be any? And uh, they're researching that. Uh, 
I was trying to give uh, really a, another person my position, but uh, they're checking into who has to represent the county commission. It's not that I don't enjoy doing it, but uh, there may be other uh, people that can do it better. During the meeting, one of the big discussions that we had at the farmland protection was uh, this thing about the mineral rights. Uh, how can we uh, protect our farmland uh, if the owner of the farm does not own the mineral? And uh, we're not sh sure about all the answers. We've got lots of questions about it and lots of concerns, and so did many of the farm owners. But we did have a gentleman at the last meeting. We had inquired about trying to employ a geologist that understood this concept and might be able to work with us trying to uh, determine whether uh, the minerals are worth anything and those kinds of things working uh, with the state uh, trying to uh, help you know we have a farm out here and, and, uh, and we know the farmer the owners do not uh, own the mineral but we don't know whether the minerals worth anything much or not uh, we said sometimes you know annually and look at these coal minerals uh, sometimes oil and gas and try to determine if they're mineable or uh, but sometimes it's very debatable so we thought maybe as a board we would look at it ourselves and uh, so we can sort of end up with a, a geologist talking about that we haven't entered a contract or anything but we are into that <coughs> Sounds like Channel 13 is uh, in the county all the time. June 28th, uh, I did provide an interview with uh, Gil McClanahan, News 13, concerning uh, issues with the legislative uh, redistricting. And I went on the record and said, I can't speak for anyone else in Lincoln County. But myself, I prefer to have Lincoln County as a single House of Delegate district. And, uh, of course, uh, and I think that's probably what Gil was hoping in in the 19th that Putnam County ended up getting their own so uh, but uh, that's just my position that he wanted to know that later in that day uh, I went to the Branchville Midkip uh, retirement party for Harold Bray Smith and they had several their family members there and <coughs> some friends and then of course the employees but uh, they had a nice retirement party for him. He's doing better health-wise. <coughs> Not well, but doing better. And the cake art lady, Liza, did do a very good job making a cake that looked very much like him. Uh, even though it did have a great beard, it still looks like him. <laughs> uh, and all the board members were there, and they're, they seem to be working well and uh, on the issue that uh, uh, Dr. Banks has been active on is the 10 mile water project is, they had a copy down here in Donald's office and they had a copy up there, things are ready to go to bid, so uh, that project is moving. <coughs> June the 30th, 9 a.m., uh, we did have that second meeting of the Hamlet's Authority and we did have a quorum, uh, a number of issues. We employed some part-time people, full-time people. Also, uh, gave a annual increment uh, pay. We do that uh, if there's money available, and uh, we were assured that there was sufficient money to give a, a uh, increment pay, but not a pay raise at this time. We did adopt the budget uh, with a couple reservations in, it and basically uh, have been reassured that the emergency medical service people are being able to make money from both non-emergency transports to dialysis type people and then for regular ambulance calls so it, uh, it is uh, making it but not you know really super but in an organization like that you can just bounce your books and employ people and provide the service you're doing well but with the county levy what really makes a difference I believe in making it really successful July 1, I made my trip to buy candy for the parade and, um, and made that work into uh, my day there. Uh, uh, as I left uh, uh, Walmart from getting the candy, uh, I thought it was doing really well. 
and uh, had all my candy bought, and had walking out to Walmart and uh, ran the wrong grade. So, uh, uh, <laughs> but anyway, we talked a little bit about Hatfield McCoy and this and that. But uh, as I left the facility, I did stop at McCorkle, and uh, I'd been invited to be there, and I stopped at McCorkle Community Center and uh, took a little bit of a tour looking at the things that they have there as far as the outreach program and also uh, the feeding program was going well. The day I was there it was uh, hot dogs uh, on the menu, but uh, lots of people eating were providing uh, with the help of LCOC and Southwestern County Commission were providing 20 meals a day there. So uh, that's quite well, I think, for the, for the area. And then from there I came on down to the uh, uh, dedication of the 20th quilt trail and it was out at the uh, fairgrounds uh, Jack's place and uh, Jack had a good uh, program set up there at one o'clock that day for the dedication so uh, it was uh, one of those things that I think again it's going to mount to something for Lincoln County and a bunch of other places this quilt trail a lot of work going into it but it's a, a good thing so we just need to keep supporting it and try to make things better and the most fun part I had since the last meeting was the 4th of July and being able to uh, have a, participate in the uh, parade as representing the county commission but having my granddaughters with me. So, you know, when you get to a certain age you never know whether those granddaughters are going to stick with you or not. So I got one that's 15 and one's 14 and they're almost 15 and, uh, and I thought, well, they may bail out on me but they, they said, no, we want to be there again. So you never know. But that concludes uh, basically my report. And again, in closing, uh, one of our crime watch people uh, didn't attend any service, but did see in the paper where uh, Donnie Fry had uh, died. And he was president of the Hearts Crime Watch last year and been a good supporter since we started the thing. But uh, we certainly uh, hate to hear those kinds of things, but uh, we uh, do appreciate the job that crime watch people do. Okay. Yeah. I did get to mention something. Pardon? I did get to mention something, if you don't care. Sure. Uh, on May the 18th, it came to my attention to get a hold of Miss Workman at Midway. And I got a hold of her, and she wanted to donate playground equipment to the Mulcroy Outreach if they got the grant to get new. And she said it'd be sometime in June before she found out they got a She called me on the 27th. She had Ellen Sowers to call me. They got the playground equipment. We picked it up thanks to local outreach volunteers, Crime Watch, Parks and Recreation, and Joey and the work for this guy. We got it Thursday and Friday, and it's all over. We just got put back together. You all told me that that day. Anything else from anyone? Been a good meeting. Take a motion to adjourn until August the 4th, 6th. Motion second. And adjourn. The hearing we'll have is still next week, the 14th. We'll still do that as a hearing, not as a meeting. Be no action or anything.